If you're a familiar face, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. My name's Alex, I'm an interior designer and I'm on a mission to help you create a more meaningful and intentional home. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to click that like button and subscribe to my channel. Today we're talking about adding more character to a builder grade home. So let's get into it. While this isn't an awful looking home and it fits the needs and lifestyle of most people who have a home like this, including myself, it really doesn't leave much room for self-expression or creativity. If I'm being honest, it also doesn't give a homeowner any real sense of individuality. It feels almost like our hand is being forced when it comes to decorating. Because these spaces feel like they're copy and pasted, you do feel that pressure that you need to keep up with what you're seeing in other people's homes or in similar spaces. In reality, adding charm, character, and your own personality is the only real way to feel the happiest in your space. When you're looking to add more character in your space, hands down, the number one tip I would recommend is changing the paint color. Typically builders are just going to put in the same neutral paint colors they see throughout the industry. So if you're looking to switch up your home a little bit, a great item to change is the paint shades throughout your space. Sometimes this can feel like a daunting task and our initial reaction is to repaint the entire space or to mix and match paint colors throughout your home in different rooms. While this can give you a great custom look, I do find for the average person this can be a little bit tricky on knowing where to start or what paint colors to use. So instead of repainting your entire house or even one individual room, I would actually focus your efforts even smaller to the key areas that are going to have the biggest impact in your space. Starting with doors, windows, and trim. Often these are painted white by the builder and it's a really great blank canvas if you're looking to add a pop of color without too much effort. If you're a fan of neutrals and you want to keep your space feeling quite light, you can keep that neutral builder grade paint on your walls and then just go a few shades darker when it comes to your doors, trim, and around your windows. Personally, I'm a big fan of this look because these are high traffic areas, a darker shade is going to help hide fingerprints and wear and tear down the road. Depending on how creative you want to get with the space, you can limit this simply to just the doorways or you could carry it through all of the trim work and around the windows in the rest of your home. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of one individual accent wall. Sometimes I feel like this is just a very generic look and it doesn't actually make your space feel special in any way. If you are interested in doing a painted feature wall, I would recommend looking for the most interesting wall in your space. Typically you wanna look at really angular walls, walls with more of an architectural detail, or something that just has a unique focal point. And if you don't have any really unique walls in your home, Home, choosing to paint the ceiling can give you a similar effect in a space. I wouldn't recommend painting over stippled or textured ceilings, but if you have just a nice flat ceiling, this is a great area to add a feature paint. And if you have ceilings that have a millwork or an architectural detail, this is hands down my number one recommendation for receiving a feature color. The same goes for walls with millwork or detail on them. This is just a great focal point to add a feature color to and it's going to provide the biggest pop in the space. In a builder grade home, usually the only window coverings that are available is some sort of blind. Now blinds aren't a bad look, they provide a lot of privacy, they help with light filtration throughout your space, but they don't offer a ton of character. One of the first things that I recommend people do when they move into a builder grade space is hanging drapes. Drapes really help to soften a space and give that feeling of warmth and coziness. It's also a great way to add a pop of color or a pattern without having to repaint or add wall paper. When working with drapes, it's important to install them as high to the ceiling as you possibly can go. And then you want the length to just nicely kiss the floor. You don't want them to be hanging above the floor or pooling at the bottom. This just isn't going to give you the tailored look that having them directly at floor level is going to give you. And a simple trick that designers like to do is extending the curtain rod past the actual window width. This way the two panels can hang on either side of the window and it gives the illusion of a large 
larger window. If you don't love the look of drapes hanging all the way down to the floor, another great option is a Roman shade. Usually you would install a Roman shade in place of a blind, so I definitely wouldn't recommend having the two installed together, but including a Roman shade can help give you the look of drapes without having all of the excess fabric hanging down. And if fabric window coverings just aren't your thing, opting for a rattan or bamboo shade can give you a similar warm look without having any of the fabric installed. These wood blinds can come in a variety of shades and can really update the look from just having a basic window covering to something with a little bit more warmth and character. In older character homes, you often find great decorative details that we just don't get anymore in new build construction. One of the best ways to add more charm in your new build home is by adding some of these decorative accents throughout your space. One of my favorite ways to add a little bit of detail around lighting is actually with the ceiling medallion. These are relatively inexpensive. You can find them online or at your local hardware store and they're really easy to install just above your light. Another easy swap is doorknobs. You can find some really unique and handcrafted items on Etsy or from a local artist in your area. I've even seen some really great deals for actual antique doorknobs on Facebook Marketplace or at vintage or antique shops. This also isn't an item you typically see swapped out in new build construction, so it's a really great way to make your home feel unique. Light switches and switch plates would also be another area I would recommend swapping out. Just like doorknobs, you can find some really really unique and handcrafted options online. And because this is such a small detail, you don't have to focus on swapping them all out at one time in your space. You can focus your efforts on a few key areas that you wanna add a point of interest to. And swapping out your cabinetry handles is a huge way to make an impact in your kitchen or your bathroom. It's almost like jewelry for your home. So even if you swap it out to something that's slightly more trendy, you can always keep what was previously installed and put it back in place. I actually do recommend swapping out your cabinetry handles every so often. This way you can almost start to build up a collection of handles that you can swap to anytime you feel like updating your space. If you own a builder grade home, chances are you do not have any fancy millwork details or molding throughout your space. So to add some depth and detail to your space, adding your own millwork is a great place to start. For instance, one of the simplest details to DIY is a picture rail. This is just a small, simple piece of molding that gets installed either halfway to three quarters of the way up your wall. Personally, I recommend installing this trim all the way around the room to give it an even look. Historically, this was actually used to hang your pictures from so you could save your walls from getting any holes in them. So if you're after a unique and interesting look, I would actually recommend using the picture rail in this way when displaying your pictures. Wainscoting or beadboard is another really classic way to add interest to your walls. If you live in an open concept home, I often find that these details can help separate one room from the next because you don't necessarily have to run them the entire length of a wall. And adding these types of details can make it really easy if you do want a small focal point in your space that you can periodically add a feature color too. Installing it all the way around your room is a nice way to achieve a two-tone look and it can help add a natural stopping point if you are after a bolder pop of color or even a fun wallpaper. A big trap that a lot of people fall into when they move into a builder grade home is their home decor. Interiors that we see on Instagram, TikTok, or Pinterest really do set the standard that this is the epitome of the perfect builder grade home. When in reality, if you want your home to have more charm, you need to be filling it with pieces of character. Purchasing pieces secondhand from the thrift store or even Facebook marketplace are going to give you unique items that you just can't purchase from the store. Heirlooms are another great item to incorporate in your home decor. It doesn't even necessarily need to be some extravagant piece of furniture, but just something that you cherish and reminds you of a loved one that maybe passed it down to you. When it comes to accessories or artwork, I would steer clear of anything mass produced. Focus instead on handmade items like a pottery or hand painted artwork. Even artifacts from your childhood or your travels are all great accents to add in your space. And things like throw blankets and toss cushions are all great opportunities to add more pops of color and pattern throughout your home. 
These can also help to layer in more texture throughout the space and add more depth. When it comes to finding inspiration for your home, you really need to unplug from the mainstream and focus more on what artists, designers, and architects are doing in their homes. Resources and channels that I personally like to pull inspiration from would be things like Architectural Digest, The Local Project, House and Garden, literally anything other than HGTV. At the end of the day, if you are looking to create a home that goes against what everybody else is doing in their homes, you are going to have to seek out information and inspiration that is not the same as what everybody else is looking at. And often experts like designers, artists, and architects are the ones that are pushing the limits of what good design is, and they are also going against the grain of what the mainstream is doing. And resources like my channel are going to help you hone in on what your personal home decor style is and how you can better implement that in your space. So even if you do live in your everyday run-of-the-mill builder grade home, there are tons of ways that you can curate your space exactly to your personal style and taste. By focusing on adding character to your space and discovering your personal home decor style, this is going to allow your home to feel timeless because you're not always going to be sucked into the endless trend cycle. Let me know in the comments which one of these tips you found the most helpful and let me know which videos you want to see next. As always, if you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and we'll see you in the next one.